And I was worried about him because he's one of our great geniuses and we have to protect our genius. You know, we have welcome, welcome to, to the crypto, crypto teacher. teacher. And guys, you know, I come back with that video just to make you think. And we have Elon Musk joining the Twitter board. And will this give Trump an entry back on Twitter? And we know the New World Order loves the Hegelian dialectic. We know Elon had nothing to do with Tesla. The same way Bill Gates had nothing to do with Microsoft. We know how this game works. Now we have Gary Gensler to use regulation to shrink the market. Remember guys, we have over 18,000 cryptos. Plus we have Janet Yellen speaking on Thursday about crypto. Remember why the New World Order wants a digital economy? Because nothing will be real. They want to take this real economy and blanket it with a virtual world. And that virtual world needs an economy. That's the first thing that's very important. And as we see, everything is going to be tokenized and put on blockchain. So this legacy market, all the stocks, bonds, ETFs, will be sitting on the New Road Order's blockchain. Remember, blockchain gives the New Road Order the all-seeing But first, they must have another main event. That big distraction that will allow them to take all this money out of the economy so then therefore they can build. And we know this is Shemitah year. We know the America, the Babylon, is going to ballot out with China, the dragon. And if this nation does not wake up, America will lose the world reserve currency and will see the digital yuan rise backed by the digital SDR. And remember the crypto teacher wrote about it a long time ago because he knows when it comes to the new world order, it's all planned out. You have a wonderful day. Twitter is adding Elon Musk to its board. Musk just tweeting, looking forward to working with Parag and uh, Twitter board to make significant improvements to Twitter in coming months. Let's get down uh, to the New York Stock Exchange. God, that covers a wide range uh, of, of things, doesn't it, uh, Jim? We <laughs> yeah, it sure it, does. It's in I the mean, eye of the beholder, it. too, isn't it? Let's see. Why. We could all we could all have our own view of what would be improvements. That's what makes the world go around, I think. But I wonder what Elon uh, is talking about. An edit yeah, button? Yeah, he's playing his cards to his vest. I mean, one thing, I can you imagine him being in a boardroom and not running the board? Uh, I know that they're welcoming him, but I think he's a Trojan horse. I, there's no way that the current, uh, the absolute uh, current makeup of the board and the way people have been going is, is uh, at all in agreement with what Musk would want. Musk wants a very different quitter, I think. Yeah, what do you think? In your view, what is that? How do, you, how do you mean? What do you mean? I think he wants to be more substantive. I think he's trying to figure out uh, how to make it so that it's not just... Uh, uh, scatological negatives being said. I mean, you have 80 million people, whatever, how many followers he has at this very moment. And I think he'd like to com somehow convert the followers into something good besides just following. Uh, right. And I think that one of, all the things he's deciding that he's put out are all about how to kind of make it a little bit better, uh, a little more flexible, but maybe to get it so that it's not a dying, uh, dying on the vine product. The company always says things are going great. And yet the stock always indicates the truth. I also want to say a few words about the unprecedented assault on free speech we have seen in recent days. These are tense and difficult times. The efforts to censor, cancel, and blacklist our fellow citizens are wrong, and they are dangerous. What is needed now is for us to listen to one another, not to silence one another. Where do you think we are, if we were to date this in, in sort of internet land, I always think of these coins, and I think of Ethereum and Solana and, and so many of these things, almost like operating systems, and almost like mobile operating systems back in the day when we talked about RIM and we talked about Palm, now we talk about iOS, we talk about Android. And the reason I'm mentioning those different operating systems is there was a time where we thought RIM was it. And then, of course, RIM is not it at all iOS came along way later and became it. How do you think about Ethereum or Solana or any of the coins that are on the screen right now in that context? Yeah, and it's a good question. And, you know, I think that, like, you know, things like, you know, AWS, right, like, like server-based infrastructure is another sort of 
a parallel to uh, to layer one blockchains. You know, in terms of where we are today, obviously, I don't know for sure, and and you know, all I can do is give my best guess about it. But you know, if I had to guess, what I would say is, look at the throughput of the systems, right? Look at the actual capacity of the actual systems as they exist today, and 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 you know, say where is that compared to where it needs to get for this ecosystem to become huge? And the answer is, it's a few orders of magnitude away. We need to get to a million transactions per second on blockchain in order to be able to support the broader you know, internet ecosystem on them. And you know, right now, Solana is you know, maybe the fastest and it's at uh, you know, tens of thousands, Ethereum's at tens of transactions per second. And so I think like proof of concept is sort of the phase that we're at, but I don't think that we're yet at the phase where you know, we have technologies that are ready to just roll out and revolutionize the world tomorrow, I think we're still three to five years away from that. But does that mean that five to 10 years from now, there will be innovation on top of these, these coins that are totally different coins, in which case the investments in those coins won't have the same value? It's a really good question. And, and of course, no one knows for sure, right? And, and like, I think what I would say is, well, what's your projection of what's gonna happen with some of the, the biggest, you know, layer ones today, right? Do you think that Lana is going to continue to scale that three to five years from now, it will be a hundred times as fast as it is today. Do you think that that network and and you know the, the open source community working on it are going to get it there? Or do you think that that's going to crap out and that what we're going to see is, you know, generation four blockchain, right. right? Which didn't even exist until a year ago um, or until two years from now that end up sort of, uh, you know, taking that whole position. Frankly, you know, it could go either way. Obviously I've been bullish on you know, Solana as, as uh, you know, a technology, um, not not making a comment necessarily as an investment. Right. Um, but I, you know, I, 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 I think that like, it's still too early to know for sure. See, obviously looking at this, Gary Gensler's made a, a bunch of comments. I want to read to you, this is from a Cowan Crypto Report, following some comments by Gary Gensler. They say, we see a threat to the existing market structure for crypto platforms as Gensler is questioning if investors can be protected when a single entity provides all the services. Concentration of crypto trading will become a major talking point in Washington. This will be used to justify imposing regulatory regimes and will be used to counter the idea that crypto is different because it's decentralized. What do you think? Yeah, I mean, you know, I think that there's certainly an extent to which, you know, there may be a, a more sort of shorted system for digital asset securities. And, and I think that, you know, our partnership with IEX is one example of that, where, where you know, we're looking to join forces uh, to do this and, and sort of like each offer a piece of the picture. Um, but I also think that, I, you know, at, at the end of the day, like what matters the most here is that there are customer protections, right? What matters the most is that there are rules of the road that protect the users, that ensure that it is a fair and equitable marketplace and market structure, um, and, and that there is transparency and protection against frauds. And you know, whether that happens in a centralized, decentralized, or you know, a, any sort of you know, in-between way, I think is a lot less important than just fundamentally that it does happen and that those protections are put in place. Hey, Sam, how did this deal come together? What, what are you trying to do here? Yeah, I, I mean, you know, really excited to work with Brad and the IEX team here. I think that you know, the, the core things that, that sort of precipitated this work you know, we have a lot of expertise with, you know, cryptocurrency, um, you know, exchanging. They have a lot of experience with securities exchanging. And, you know, it's a really good opportunity for us to work together and work with the SEC and other regulators to build out pathways for uh, digital asset uh, securities. Hey, Brad. We're going to a different economy, and we're going to be learning more about that uh, as we go. But clearly, we're, we're, we're learning that things can be done uh, from remote, remote locations. We're learning that technology can replace people even more than we thought. We're not going back to the same economy. We're going, we're recovering, but to a different economy. And it'll be one that is more leveraged to technology. And I worry that that is going to make it even more difficult than it was for, for many workers. In Silicon Valley and my friends who work in technology know that what we did to the manufacturing workers, we are now going to do to the retail workers, the call center workers, the fast food workers, the truck drivers, and then even bookkeepers, accountants, uh, insurance agents, lawyers, and on and on through the economy. 
So what happened to the manufacturing workers is a very clear sign. This effort, and China has big plans for this. They intend to seed um, their digital yuan into the global environment by giving it away to visitors at next winter's Olympics. When they arrive at the airport, they're going to get di yuan digital wallets. They're going to receive digital yuan. They're going to use it uh, throughout their visits to Beijing, and then they're going to take it back to their own countries. They see this as a huge advantage. Why? Because who controls the underlying protocols, who un controls the underlying standards of the future of money will control the future of money. most powerful person in the world is the storyteller. The storyteller sets the vision, values, and agenda of an entire generation to come, Steve Jobs. And guys, you know I truly believe in this. When you look at the New World Order, they're the storytellers, and that's the reason why I wrote my New World Order book. But guys, now it's time to change the current generation. And I wrote three kids' books. You know, I love the Trinity because I understand the power that's in it. So I have three books. We have an opportunity to change the generation, to educate, not just me, but I want to show you that I take action on a daily basis. And I want you to take action on a daily basis. Whether it's your job, whether it's in your community, we have an opportunity right now to educate the masses. I posted this on my Twitter account. Please share, but this is a short clip of the three books. There's going to be a clothing line and action figure. Please get these books for your kids, nephews, cousins, friends, so therefore we can start the re-education now. Because as we see, the fourth industrial revolution foundation is definitely here. Robots, algorithms, drones, taking humanity out the picture we have to re-educate, but let's get into the video. Part one, King Joshua and Grandma Tim save the village. Part two, King Joshua and Grandma Tim save New York. Long COVID-33. Part three, King Joshua and Grandma Tim goes to China. It's mandatory. To get part one, part two, and part three of this series, it's time to re-educate Generation Z.